Welcome to DC Talk Radio 90.9 FM, the station where issue is our concern. It's another lovely, lovely day, and uh, we're back here on a show called Community Heroes, where we speak to people who are helping the less fortunate in the community. And I know last week we were not with you, we had some reception issues, but we are back again on the show. And uh, today we are joined by Nangoma Foundation. They joined us about two weeks ago and we decided to bring them back again live to, you know, just have a little conversation about uh, the works which they're doing. So in the studio, I am joined by Apostle Mwanza Soko. How are you doing today? Very well, thank you, sir. And how are you doing yourself? I'm great, I'm great. And uh, how is the day going so far? Well, it's okay. God is great. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's going on well. Thank you so much. Okay, that's great, that's great. Yeah. Um, yeah, last time we spoke, it was quite nice. Um, we had a caller come in talking about schools. I know now schools have opened officially mm. and uh, free mm. education. And, uh, you know, just from your analysis, how, like, how do you think it's going right now when it comes to free education? Mm -hmm. uh, are people receiving the right type of education in terms of it being free? And are, are they receiving the, the right, um, you know, services and whatnot? Well, thank you so much. Um, you know, it's, uh, it's so exciting. I've, I've interacted with parents that are so excited with the coming in of free education that the government of the Republic of Zambia has uh, introduced. And I think it's going on well. A lot of people that were not able to, you know, take their children to school are so excited. And, you know, all those costs, like uh, January was one of those months that you'd be scared to when it's approaching because of, uh, you know, the, the costings that it was coming with. And now there's, there's a free education. A lot of people are so excited. And I think it's, it's been received by the general public. People are so excited about it, except that, you know, it does not come with, without its own challenges. There okay. are also mm -hmm. other issues surrounding the same. But really, it's going on well, and we are so much grateful to, to the government for that uh, provision. Okay. Well, that, that's wonderful to hear. You know, I, I just heard about one or two situations where people had to pay for uniforms, mm -hmm. when mm -hmm. it's not normal for you to pay for uniforms or the price being hiked for uniforms to cover up for the cost of uh, free education. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those are just a few issues which I think need to be sorted out at least. Yeah, you're right, you're right. There's an issue of, of uh, your school uniforms. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, some, some, some days back or maybe the last year, we had cases where schools were selling uniforms. Okay. And in most cases, school uniforms that were being bought from the school were, you know, a lot more expensive than when one takes it upon themselves to buy or maybe do a tailor-made uh, uniform. And, um, they, you know, they, that was not really what uh, was um, uh, guided by the government. It's mm -hmm. not right. I mean, it's, it was even an illegal thing that uh, schools were doing to sell school uniforms. So the government has come in to clarify on that one. And right now, there isn't any school, unless otherwise. Unless, unless otherwise, otherwise yeah. there isn't any school that is allowed to sell uniforms. Parents okay. are allowed, as long as you have the right material, that is what is required by the school, do your tailor-made uniform from wherever at your own cost and make sure a child is taken back to school. Oh. And so that is what is happening. And, uh, you know, there were, there were a lot of costings that people had to go. Okay, imagine you're getting a jersey maybe at 500 kocha for, 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 for a school uniform. I mean, it was, it was, it, it was, crazy. it was That's as cool, though, man. yeah, it was as though there isn't even any free education because look at the costings for, for a child. Maybe there's a, a thousand or a two thousand going just on the uniform. Then how free is free? So when people sort of cried out on the issue of um, uh, free education, you know, the government uh, took heed and now it's, it's, um, it, I mean, there's, there isn't that going on in schools. Mm. Which is a plus, which is a plus. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now, N Nangoma uh, Foundation, last time we, I think we barely scratched the surface yeah. about the work because we are we're a bit in a hurry. Uh, time was a bit limited. Mm -hmm. And maybe today we have a bigger chance to get to know the foundation. Well, thank you so much. Yes. Yes, yeah, so Nangoma Foundation is a, a sister organization with a, a, an organization that is called Global Human Rights Alliance. The Global Human Rights Alliance is uh, registered in the United States, in California, okay. because that is where some of this is based in. And her name is uh, Pomulo Stumbeko, a Zambian who is based over there, and she started um, uh, Global Human Rights Alliance over there. So when we wanted to register this organization, we realized there was that name already existing. And so we had to come with this Nangoma Foundation. And uh, Nangoma Foundation, our core objective, our values, our mission is to advocate for human rights. So advocacy for human rights is what we are so much uh, centered on and focused on to make sure that people are educated of their rights and also to ensure that there isn't any violation of human rights out there. 
We want to make sure that everyone's right is being respected, right to education, right to life, you know, right to, to a proper shelter, right to, uh, to freedom of expression and all those kind of things. So we want to make sure that uh, human rights are respected. Other than that, we do, uh, you know, some vulnerable and uh, charity works like uh, we are doing. I'm sure I've got some ladies that are coming to shed more light oh, yes, on, yes. Uh, on, uh, on that one as well. But um, we also do quite a number of things. We don't just end uh, on advocating. We also want to find solutions. Like, for example, if somebody reports to us of a, of a GBV case, like maybe a woman or even a man, you know, GBV now it's, it's working in both sides. Even uh -huh. men are being battered by their wives. So if somebody comes to report a case of that nature to us, we've got to, you know, go deep into it, dive into it, identify what are some of the solutions that we can bring on board. How can we help this situation? So like the book drive that we're talking about, we are, you know, asking people to donate so that every child goes back to school. So that the issue of uh, you know free education is really felt by everyone and just realized by everyone. Mm, okay. Yes. So it's quite a big job. How do you manage to? Um, does it get bulky? Because you're you're talking human rights, you're talking GBV, mm -hmm. you're talking about uh, we're talking about free education. Like, do you are you guys uh, have like a police unit where you've got different <laughs> little services yeah. of people? <laughs> this this uh, sector handles human rights. The other one handles GBV. Yeah, okay, really, um, myself, I'm a chief executive officer okay. for Nangoma Foundation in Zambia. That's just my role, to ensure that, you know, there's um, administration-wise, there's all these things uh, running. But we are divided into so many departments. Like, for example, we have people in charge specifically for, for the, the youth department where any issue concerning the young people are being addressed by a certain individual. I pray one time we have time to come and just, you know, introduce everyone. We are, we are a team. We are a team. We have uh, people that are in charge of, you know, uh, workers' rights, for example. We have people that are in charge of uh, women's rights and, and so on and so on. So we are divided. We are doing a number of things and a number of departments that falls under us. Like you said, it's not only, you know, like the free education or anything like that, but we also going as far as maybe talking about rehabilitation centers because we also want to, to ensure that, you know, the issue of a drug and abuse alcohol and you know drug abuse and all those kind of stuff uh, also the issue that is so like China, yeah like chinama but you know a, a, a rehabilitation center is something that we don't really have not only in zambia but in africa as a whole like you know when somebody has gone through you know they've been addicted to drugs they need people to counsel them they need to interact with people who've been in those situations and they are not in those situations now for example if i was a drug addict maybe you know i was maybe an, an alcohol abuser Okay, I abused alcohol to a point that it finished me completely. Finished you. you know, for me, I mean, if, if somebody hears my story out there, I interact with someone who will be able to, you know, understand. And, uh, you know, they, they need someone to, to, they get to feel that somebody understands them. Somebody knows what they're talking about. Somebody knows how they started and whatever they have gone through. So we are doing quite a number of things, not only advocates for human rights, but all these areas, we, 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 are, we, are, we are there. Okay, so yeah. you're still here, tuned into DC Top Radio 90.9 FM. In the studio, I'm joined by Mr. Manza Soko. He's uh, an apostle, and he's also working with Nangoma Foundation. They, mm -hmm. they have uh, a mission statement which talks about human rights, advocacy, information, education, protection for all by partnering with stakeholders yeah. such as government and non-governmental organizations. So there's quite a lot of uh, things which they, they do as well. So it's... Uh, it's quite um, quite a lot, as you mentioned, that mm -hmm. you are you, you are looking to build. Now, where where have they been? Where have you guys been? Like in this this past time since it was created in in um oh sorry, Mr. Simon Wanza. Yeah. <laughs> sorry <laughs> about it. It's okay. Yeah. Like, sorry, sorry. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. So Apostle Simon Wanza. Mm. Yes. So um, my question is. Um, yes. Um, when, when, when have you now become serious in Zambia to say that this is the work you want to start doing? All right. So usually, uh, basically, what brought us in, like uh, being, uh, uh, you know, registering ourselves in Zambia, we, we came on board uh, from, um, you know, the, the previous uh, general elections. Okay. One of the, our mandate is to make sure that there is free and fair elections. Okay, they should be free and fair, where people know their rights to vote, and you know, no one has a right to tell anyone who to vote for, or all that, all those kind of stuff. So we we came on board during we are, I think we are so prompted by the happenings, you know, the political violence, you know, the the cardinalism issues, all those things that were happening in our nation. So we thought we can also add our voice, and that's how Nangoma Foundation came about to be to be registered, and uh, we've been operating since last year. And uh, we, are, we are proud to announce to the general public that, you know, we, we raised over 100 uh, election observers and monitors in, uh, across the country to monitor and make sure that there was free 
and uh, fair elections during the, the just ended uh, general elections. And what was the general consensus? Um, how were they observing the, the elections? All right, um, you know, basically to, 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 to make sure that there isn't an issue of rigging, uh -huh. you know, like uh, voters, uh, their rights are, are protected. Like you no know, one has to tell somebody you have to vote for this or maybe buying votes. You know, we have cases where some, sometimes during the day of elections, some people do come with money, you know, talk to people, you got to vote for this one. So we're paying you. This, you know, people have, we are we are just educating people to ensure that they are having this, uh, you know, you, a free will to vote for whoever they want and to make sure that their votes. You know, we had an issue where, uh, like uh, I'm sure it's, it's on record, where uh, you know uh, some uh, some uh, some people were buying voters cards. You yes, know, we heard about yeah, that. we had uh, people were being arrested for buying bulky voters cards. And also, so our our duty was to ensure that all those things were just not happening. And so. Uh, the, you said the job was quite successful. Well, it was. It was. It was. We we did our job very well. We had a strong youths who were you know they they really wanted to see these elections being free and fair. So myself, for example, I I, I was in Kapiri. I observed from from Kapiri Porch, and I remember the whole time from the time that people started voting until the time they announced. Nobody slept. You know, we were just there on the ground to ensure the right thing is done make sure everything yeah so I, it was it was happening across the country and you know it we, we we are proud that we delivered a successful job okay that's wonderful yeah, it's sure. really wonderful and uh, yeah it, it's something that's very important i know these elections were quite emotional for a lot of people yeah but yeah. it's also important that things are done very well mm -hmm. things are done properly as much as possible now yes. um i, I want to focus on a few things um, in terms of the activities that you, you do have right yeah. You, you do fight for human rights. Right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And do you think right now, like the average Zambian, are they aware of the human rights which they have? Uh, well, that's, I think this is where we really need to, to, to emphasize and also educate people on quite a number of things. For example, if you read the United Nations, uh, the, the Charter for Human Rights, there are about 30 of them. And it's funny that now people only, you know, people would talk about, you know, the right to the right to education, right to life. I mean, those are some of the things that people know. Like, really, um, I mean, uh, these are some of their rights. But if you read it deeper, so our our duty is to know that we educate people. On what are some of their rights? You'd really, you know, you'd you do you'd be surprised to note that uh, um, we we are living in a time and a day where people do not know that if you're arrested by the police.